So in terms of when the idea for the Old Republic came up at Bioware, I think it's been, you know, it's, doing an MMO is something we've wanted to do for probably over a decade. And we wanted to, to wait until we had the right team, the right uh, partners, the right uh, IP. Yeah, and I think the timing was pretty serendipitous that way. Is that Bioware wanted to work with us, they wanted to do an MMO, they had a lot of experience in playing MMOs and they wanted to bring some of their you know, learnings and some of their uh, aspects of gameplay mainly storytelling and bring that into MMOs. And just you know, make sure we had everything assembled to be able to make a great game. So you know, finding the partners at LucasArts and, and working in the Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic universe is a dream come true for us. Yeah, I'd say this is definitely our biggest project. Yeah, we've worked on some very large games. I think mean, you know, come, you know, Mass Effect was a big game. And Dragon Age is yet another big game. But you know, Star Wars The Old Republic is just plain huge. And you know, what makes it huge is not only that, that you know, it's, it's, hey, it's Star Wars. It's got, it's got to be epic. Again, the MMO space, and we've got something to prove. This is our first game in that space. There's some really great competition, and we want to stand out. We want to do some things, namely for adding story to the equation in the Bioware way that, that changed, changed the equation. There are a lot of reasons why we decided not to do KOTOR 3 and why we decided to do this as an MMO instead. Um, first of all, I think that uh, the storytelling that was behind the KOTOR franchise is very applicable to doing an MMO. So there's no reason to just limit it to a single player experience. Um, there's a lot of potential in opening it up to the MMO wide audience experience. Uh, and that's one of the unique features that we're bringing to, to the bear, uh, to the genre with this game. One of the ways, we, one of the things we like to joke about, um, about this game is just the sheer amount of content we're doing and the fact that we're really, when our fans ask, are, why aren't you doing Nice Old Republic 3? We're really doing Nice Old Republic 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 plus. We have that much content, that many stories, um, and we really get to do a lot of the things that we wouldn't have been able to do in KOTOR 3. One of the things about the uh, type of storytelling we're doing, because our stories revolve around a player's class, his role, um, we're able to actually tell stories that are very focused on who the player is, which is something that other Bioware games haven't been able to do. So we're huge fans of MMOs at Bioware. We play pretty much everything else out there, and we really appreciate the things that make great MMOs great, awesome. Uh, there's great exploration, there's combat, there's customization progression, and the older public has all those things. It, it's got those pillars. But what we're doing is we're adding a fourth pillar, a, a pillar of story and character and meaningful choice with consequences where you actually get to experience your, your personal life story, your, your history as a character. I think what you see in a lot of MMOs today is high emphasis on character advancement, emphasis on combat, character customization, but what's really missing is that story element. You don't have the context for why you're doing all these missions and quests, why you're out killing ten wolves, right? You don't understand the context. So story puts that into context, gives you much more of an immersive experience where you're really building a stronger relationship with your online character, your avatar, than you would without it. And you also build relationships with other characters. For example, in our game we'll have companion characters that are there with you on your adventures, and you can have dialogue with them and you start building relationships with them and if you you know piss them off enough they may leave <laughs> and, and say screw this I'm out of here. And you really can't overestimate the impact of choice in the MMO space I and mean, choice is something that actually in many ways doesn't really exist. You you know get a quest and you do your quest. It's not you can't say well I'm gonna do something different or you change your mind or you know manipulate a character into doing having a different result but that's really what we're talking about. It's the, it's the opportunity to have a greater degree of freedom and degree of choice in the game that you know, never has been there before. So in terms of what, what we're adding to the MMO space, I think the thing we're really excited about adding to the, the pillars of combat, exploration, and progression are, is story. And I guess one way to ex express that is just imagine those magical moments in the Star Wars movies where you know maybe uh, Ben Kenobi and, and Luke and Leia and Han are all kind of exploring the Death Star and, 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 and you know, trying to, to find a way through the uh, adventure and, and splitting up the party and trying to do unique things together. I mean, that's, that's the kind of experience we're hoping to create with the addition of story in the Old Republic. And we think it's going to be pretty damn exciting. The, challenge, the biggest challenge uh, for this game is the sheer amount of content we have to create. This is a huge game. And just to give you an idea of how huge this game is, um, we were taking a look at it, and really, this game has more story content than every single other Bioware game put together that's come before. So that would mean Baldur's Gate, Baldur's Gate 2, and Everwinter Nights, Nice Old Republic, Jade Empire, Mass Effect in all the expansions. The Old Republic takes place 300 years after the original Nice Old Republic, which puts us about 3,600 years before the movies. Uh, we've had a whole lot of changes since 
the KOTOR endings uh, from KOTOR 1 and 2. And one of the things that's happened in the meantime between them is that the Sith Empire, the ancient Sith Empire, has actually been rediscovered. Uh, what we had before this in KOTOR is we had people who were creating, sort of recreating the Sith Empire and coming back, declared themselves Sith, and then had a bunch of people they said were their Sith Empire. Now we have the actual Sith Empire, which means we're not conquering one planet, we're coming in in mass. So the Sith Empire has re-emerged, uh, gone to war with the Republic, has really ground the Republic into the ground, and then there was a very tenuous peace. And when the game kicks in, it's right after that, uh, hostilities have started to rise up again, and the players get to come in and sort of take, uh, take the roles of the big heroes that are happening at this pivotal moment. One of the fantasies was, you know, recreating that, um, the dynamic of, uh, you know, the original series, where you had Luke Skywalker, Han Solo, Princess Leia, all in the Millennium Falcon, traveling around the galaxy, they're all working for the Rebel Alliance against the Empire. And there's that huge overarching story. You know, the Rebels against the Empire, you have the attack on Hoth, you have, you know, the battle over the Death Star. But at the same time, each of the characters, Han Solo and Luke Skywalker, had their own personal story. Han Solo was being pursued by Boba Fett because he owed money to Jabba the Hutt because of things he had done in his past. Luke Skywalker was, had to go and train under Yoda, and he had a, a father who was kind of a mean guy as well. <laughs> and you know, you had, so you had, these two, um, you had these two characters who had very personal stories, but at the same time they had joined together and were you know, involved in the, the epic war between the, the rebels and the, the Empire. So one of the things that became really important to us is that we separated the idea of, one, of faction and good and evil, which is something we talk about a lot, right? Like, light side, dark side is not the same as faction. So you say, hey, I'm going to roll a character on the Republic side, but if you think about in the original KOTOR, you played a character who was worked for the Republic, right. but that didn't mean you couldn't be dark side. Right. Same thing, you could roll a character and be in the Empire, but that doesn't mean you have to be dark side. Right? You can play the good guy in the bad place, trying to do good things. You can play the bad guy in the good place, trying to do bad things. So we really separated out the idea of faction. So all of the people, Jedi and non-Jedi, who are from the Republic are on one side. All the people, uh, both Sith and non-Sith, are on the other side. I think what we can bring to the table is with our experience with the brand and the knowledge of what's worked and what hasn't with Star Wars and what's most popular with our Star Wars fans, we bring those elements to Bioware and say, hey, we know, you know what works here and what doesn't. Let's see if we can work together to kind of tweak this a little bit or tweak that. And that's how the collaborative partnership's working. Your choices determine not just what you can do when you become good, when you become light side or become dark side, but also where the story is going to go. Your personal story, and that's one of the things that we've been talking about is the class stories, absolutely is affected by the choices you make. The big difference and what makes it so impactful when people are playing it and they realize is you have no save button. One of the ways people have traditionally always played Bioware games, a lot of people, is, oh my god, that's huge, F10, right? And then you reload it and you're like, oh, that would have happened, that's exciting. Yeah, well, guess what? You're however many dozens of hours into a massive multiplayer online game, that decision is going to make huge ramifications that is going to affect for hours and hours and hours, and you have to make it and you have to live with it and it really puts an impact onto choices and storytelling that actually makes them much stronger than we've ever been able to do in a game. Well, we're announcing the game today, and the game's early in production, and you know, our focus is on quality and building a whole set of content, a rich set of content for players that they can experience right when the game launches. We're not going into any details on the schedule or the team size or anything like that, but you can trust that like all projects of Bioware, we're going to make a great game. We're going to make sure we take the, the right amount of time and deliver the features and the content to just make something just, just awesome. I'll give you one piece of um, information on this. And as the astute people that watch this, we named at least six people on that team. <laughs> so there's at least six people working on the product. There might be more, I think, probably more. I think there's more, yeah. I've seen more people around. I'm not sure what they do, but they you know, do stuff. It, it's, a, it's a magical combination, though, of the people who have worked on the best of breed MMOs and the people who've worked on a lot of great Bioware RPGs put them together on one team and I think we have a we have an amazing combination of people. So our focus is a building all that quality and all that content so we, we don't have an announcement yet on the launch date and you know when the content and the quality is there that's a sign that we'll be ready to go. 
At the same time, we're part of Electronic Arts and we're committed to making sure we deliver a great game that's uh, you know, for our fans as, as soon as we can because we know they're eager to play it like we are.